Today we are going to be working up to the peak pose of Bakasana, which is crow pose. It is an arm balance, but like always, we're going to have options and steps along the way. So please just listen to your body, honor your practice. There's no need to go to the full expression of the posture. As we work with where we are today, we will eventually build the muscle, the balance, everything we need to eventually one day approach the full expression of the posture. So meet yourself where you are today, stay connected with the breath, and that'll take you wherever you need to go. So on that note, we will get started in a seated posture. So find whatever feels comfortable for you, whether that's legs crossed, extended. If you prefer to lay down, please do so. Um, I'll be guiding sitting, but totally up to you. And then we'll take the next couple of minutes to truly allow ourselves to arrive here and now. Whenever you're ready and you find your seat, Gently draw your beautiful eyes closed. And we'll take the next couple of moments to arrive in the space that we are in and also within our bodies. So maybe you begin to introduce small little rocks forward and back, just allowing yourself to feel the ground under your legs, under your hips and sits bones, rocking very slowly, just feeling the distribution of weight move forward and back. Eventually make smaller and smaller rocks, slowing down the pace, eventually making your way to a stagnant seated posture. And then we'll shift those rocks side to side. So gently the shoulders go towards the right and then the left. Again, moving quite slowly, just feeling into this gentle sway of the torso side to side. Notice how the weight just gently flows to the right and the left. And just like we did when we were moving forward and back, start to slow down the rocks, making them shorter, eventually making your way to stacking the shoulders directly over the hip points in a nice, easy seat. Take your time with this. And once you've found your way to a balanced seat, stack every vertebra one on top of another, all the way through the back of the neck as the crown of the head pulls up towards the ceiling. Almost imagining as though you have a pole or a rod along the spine, the back body keeping you nice and tall. And as we stay lifted on this rod, everything else relaxes. So soften the face, relax the shoulders down the back body, soften the chest and the belly, relax the jaw, and begin to feel into your breath. Connect the mind with a sensation of breathing. Let everything else dissolve towards the background, releasing the week that you had, letting go of anything left in the future. Settle into here and now by feeling your breath in the body. Notice where you feel the breath throughout every inhale and exhale. You may notice it in any variation of the nostrils, the throat, the chest and belly, possibly the back body or even the sides. Notice where you feel the breath throughout every inhale and exhale. Take a couple of breaths simply allowing your mind to rest, to feel the sensation within. 
release attachment to anything else that the mind wants to think about right now. Couple more big breaths. Let yourself just feel the body breathe. Imagine the mind softening, relaxing, melting away. Once you feel centered and grounded in your breath, gently peel the eyes open and find somewhere to look on the ground ahead of you. Create a soft and easy gaze rather than staring at one point in particular. Can you still feel the breath in the body though the eyes are open? Take a couple moments, continue to notice to feel the breath. And once you feel ready to move, we'll gently make our way to a tabletop position, hands and knees. So take your time when you're ready. We'll shift on over, hands and knees, tabletop position. And then from here, simply child's pose. So big toes touch, knees spread wide on an exhale, sink your hips back towards the heels and melt your body down. If it feels good for you, you can gently sway or rock the hips side to side, just letting your body sink towards the mat. Forehead could rest on the ground or hang in the air. Wherever it is in your body right now is fine. On your inhales, can you feel the back body physically expand? On the exhales, can you feel yourself melt down? Take a couple big breaths like this. Again, just allow your mind to feel the body breathe, letting everything else go. One more big breath. When your next inhale arises, gently shift back up, tabletop position, hands and knees. And when you're here, let's make sure the wrists are directly under the shoulders and the knees are hips distance. We'll move through a couple rounds of cat cows. Inhale, belly drops down, heart pulls through as you look up towards the ceiling. Exhale, begin to round as you look towards the knees, thighs, or the belly button. Inhale, belly pulls down as the gaze goes up, and you can follow your own breath and move at your own pace. Exhale, round. As you round, really press the ground away through the hands and knees. A couple more rounds. Inhale, belly drops down, shoulders pull away from the ears. Exhale, round, lifting the shoulder blades. Inhale, belly down, look up. We'll do two more rounds. Follow your breath, breathe through the spine. Exhale and round. Last time, inhale, pull the belly button down as you look up. Exhale, round, lifting through the back body. Inhale, back to neutral tabletop. Exhale, down dog. So curl the toes under, lift the knees up. Press those hips on back, down dog. Pause here for a couple minutes or moments. Bend the knees. Kind of find a movement that feels good for you. Breathe through the backs of the legs. You can shift the weight forward and back, side to side. Come onto those tippy toes. Wake up the backs of the legs. Continue that deep breathing, breathing towards the belly button. About two more big breaths here. One more breath. All right, eventually make your way to a stagnant downward facing dog. So without any movement, really try to press the weight back towards the heels as the heels drive down. It's okay if the heels don't touch the ground. Low belly pulls in. All right, on your next inhale, lift the right foot up off the ground, toes point towards the back of the room. On your exhale, shift forward to, to plank pose, keep that leg lifted. On your inhale, can you lift that back leg up any higher? Exhale, bring that right knee towards the right shoulder or upper arm. Inhale, step back, plank pose, 
Exhale, lower yourself down to the mat. Inhale, low cobra, peel the heart up. Exhale, curl the toes under, press on back, downward facing dog. Very good job. Pause and down dog for about five breaths. Your choice if you want to add movement or not. If you are in a stagnant downward facing dog, really press the hands into the mat, specifically between the pointer of the finger and the thumb. Inner upper arms roll out away from the ears. Low belly pulls in and press the knees and thighs towards the back of the room. One more big breath. We're going to do that same flow on the other side. Alrighty. On your next inhale, left foot lifts up off the mat, toes point towards the back of the room. Exhale, come forward to plank. Inhale, can you lift that lifted foot any higher? Exhale, knee to shoulder or outer upper arm. Inhale, step back to plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, low cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Curl the toes under, press up and back. Five big breaths in your downward facing dog. Really begin to work it here. Low belly pulls in. Heels drive down. Knees and thighs press backwards. Two more big breaths. Awesome job. One more breath. Beautiful. On your inhale, shift forward to plank. Drop the knees down. Exhale, child's pose. A big toes touch. Knees spread wide. Sink the hips back to the heels. Pause here, a couple big breaths. Notice how you feel. If you need to kind of wring out the wrists a bit, making fists and drawing circles with the hands, feel free to do so. Breathe deeply. Two more big breaths, come back to the breath. Feel your body. One more breath. Beautiful, inhale, tabletop position, hands and knees. Pause here. Let's find our proper alignment again. So wrists under shoulders, knees, hips distance. We're going to move on to shoulder retractions next. Kind of like angry cat pose and cat cow, but not quite as extreme. So we're going to imagine spreading the shoulder blades on the back body. We will do that on your next inhale. Press the ground away through your hands as much as you can. You'll feel the shoulders lift and expand on the back body. Once you're here, try to pull the low belly in towards the spine. Exhale, relax it all. All right, let's do a couple more rounds. Inhale, press the hands into the mat. You'll feel the chest and shoulders lift. Low belly sucks in. Exhale, lower. Three more. Inhale, press the ground away. Shoulders expand, low belly pulls in. Exhale, relax. Last two, you got it. Inhale, press the ground away. Exhale, relax. Final one. Inhale, press the ground away. Relax. Great job. Take a big breath here. <sighs> All right. On your next inhale, curl the toes under, lift the knees up. Exhale, press it on back, down dog. You're doing an awesome job so far. Couple big breaths in down dog. And imagine that motion that we just did, that pressing the hands into the ground, expanding the shoulders on the back body. Try to do that in your downward facing dog. Notice how it feels to open up the back body with the shoulder blades. Two more big breaths. One more. Great job. Inhale. Begin to walk or step the feet up between the hands. Now once you get here, rise up halfway, pull the heart forward. Exhale, fold down. Now we're going to try something a little bit different in our forward fold today to prepare for crow pose. So if you want to listen and watch me before you attempt, totally fine. But essentially, if the hands are not at the ground level, you're going to bend the knees so much so that your hands come flat on the ground, just forward of the toes, okay? So we're going to practice shifting the weight from the feet, the legs, to the hands. And the way we're going to do that is press the hands down towards the mat, claw and almost do that same motion we did in tabletop where we press the ground, the, the ground away and feel the lift in the shoulders. Then from here becomes fun. You shift your shoulders forward so they come forward of the wrists. Maybe the ankles lift up off the mat. All right, you want to do a couple together. So big inhale, shift the shoulders forward. Maybe the heels lift up. You should feel the weight transfer to the hands and arms. Exhale, lower. Three more. Inhale forward. Exhale down, two more, inhale forward, exhale down, one more, inhale forward, 
exhale, heels come down. Take a moment if you need to kind of wring out those wrists, feel free to do so. Now, if that felt like more than enough for you, you were gonna stay right there. If you want to move a little bit further, we're gonna lift one foot, the right foot up off the mat and do the same thing, okay? So hands come back down. If you need to bend those knees, feel free to do so. We claw the mats with the fingertips. So on your next inhale, bend the right knee like you wanna kick your booty with the right heel, all right? Same exact thing, foot's just lifted now. So on your next inhale, can you shift the weight towards the hands? Maybe the left heel lifts up off the ground. Exhale, lower down. Four more, you can move at your own pace. Inhale, shoulders go forward of the fingertips. Exhale, down, last three. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Exhale, down, two more, you got it. Inhale, shift the weight forward. Exhale, down, final one on the side. Inhale, shift forward. Exhale, down, set that right foot down. Take a break, breath or two. If you need to make fists with the hands and wring out the wrists a bit, feel free to do so. Come back to your breath. Two more big breaths. And then we'll attempt lifting the left foot up off the ground. If you want to keep both down, please feel free to do so. All right, hands come back down. Again, the wrists are about in alignment with the toes. On your next inhale, bend that left knee now, like you want to kick your booty with the left heel. All right, on your next inhale, shift the weight forward. Can you lift possibly that right heel up off the mat? Exhale, lower, four more. Inhale, shoulders go forward. Exhale, lower, three more. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower, final, final two. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower, one more. Inhale, forward. Exhale, lower, set that left foot down. Inhale, rise up halfway. Exhale, step the feet on back, plank pose, lower yourself down to the mat. Inhale, low cobra or upward facing dog. Exhale, child's pose, so big toes touch, knees spread wide, sink the hips back towards the heels. Whew, that is a working, working workout there. All right, if you need to find a relief in the wrists, again, make fists with the hands, make circles with the hands around the wrists in each direction. Maybe you press the hands in towards each other and just kind of wave the fingertips side to side. Find some sort of relief because we put a lot of weight into the hands and wrists. We're opening them up a bit, strengthening them, but give them a little bit of relief in child's pose. Come back to your breath. Maybe you feel increased heat in the body, the heart rate go up, even out those inhales and exhales. <sighs> Breathe deeply, you're doing an awesome job. Two more big, big breaths here. Feel the breath in your body, come back to here and now. One more big breath. Beautiful. On your next inhale, Come back up, tabletop position, hands and knees. Curl the toes under, and then we're gonna come to Malasana, which is a low squat. So you're gonna walk the hands back towards you, feet spread wide, toes kind of flare out toward the front corners of your mat, and then you just kind of sink your hips on down. All right, so this is Malasana, kind of a prep pose towards crow pose, Bakasana, or peak pose of class. So we're gonna work slowly into Bakasana, and this is almost gonna be workshop style, so feel free to uh, watch me, to play on your own. And find where this works in your body. We're meeting ourselves where we are at today. If you have a pillow or blocks that you want to place in front of you because of possibly leaning forward into it, feel free to do it. Also, if you are practicing with a partner today, you can have your partner come in front of you, one foot on the ground, so one heel, one knee bent, one knee on the ground, and you can have them kind of have their hands out like that their hands will go exactly under your shoulders. So when you lean forward, they can catch you. They can also come down like this. When you lean forward, they can catch you. So possibly preventing face planting towards the ground with this arm balance. Again, hopefully we're gonna take this slow enough and one step at a time where, so you can find where this works in your body. All right, so right now we're in Malasana. Had you hanging out there for a moment. So 
the way that we're going to work into this is that just like those movements we practice, so we're trying to bring in what we did when we pressed away shoulder retraction, so that's part A. Part B is like when we came forward to plank pose with the knee in towards the shoulder. We want to get the knees as high up on the arms as possible. So it's almost like this rounding, pressing away of the whole upper body in order to get those knees up on the shoulders. So bring those hands out about a foot or so in front of you. All right, and then on your next inhale, begin to lift the booty up away from the ground. And then see if you can, now you might bring the hands back towards you or the feet a little closer, but come up onto the tippy toes and see how close you can bring the knees towards the armpits on the upper arms, all right? So we're gonna pause here and maybe you just play around with just like we did in the forward fold. Shift the weight forward towards the hands so the, out, the shoulders come forward of the fingertips. Now you'll add a 90 degree bend to the elbows. Eventually you'll lean forward so much that the elbows will stack over the wrists as the shoulders come forward. So again, you can take a peek at me if you like. So maybe you just play around with this and notice how it feels, the muscles that are ignited in such a process. When you're here, you wanna keep pulling the elbows towards each other, like they're magnetized towards each other rather than letting them splay out. All right, so get a feel for that. Claw the mats with the fingertips. Now let's explore lifting one foot up off the mat. So same concept, maybe you work forward, elbows over wrists, shoulders come towards the mat, 90 degree bend in the elbow. Can you lift your right foot up off the ground? All right, pause, you just notice how it feels. Maybe you exhale, lower it down. Play around with the other side. Can you lift the left foot up? Maybe exhale, lower, pause. Now play around with that for a couple moments, just notice how it feels to lift one foot, maybe the other. Notice that forward motion that you really have to make. Maybe both feet up, come up off the ground as well and you play around with that for a couple moments. Breathe here whenever you need to come down, take a break. Feel free to come into Malasana or sit gently on the heels. You can relax the wrists for a bit and then give it another try. So take the next couple moments for you, allow yourself to explore this pose. Feel free to pause in any position that we've practiced so far. So again, we get into this, bending the knees, trying to nestle the knees towards the armpits. We're essentially making a shelf with the upper arms that we kind of lean the body into. Low belly sucks in and up, the arms press, hands press down towards the mat. Again, maybe you play around with lifting one foot, Maybe the other comes out and find a gazing point in front of you. Couple more big breaths wherever you're at. Breathe deeply. Whenever you're ready to come on out, feel free to do so. If you still want to explore and play a little longer, feel free to do so as well. It's not about achieving the posture. It's about noticing where the mind goes when we approach something challenging. What comes through your mind? What kind of thoughts come towards yourself, your practice? You are perfect where you're at today. So take a couple moments. If you want to still move around and play with crow pose, feel free to do so. Whenever you are complete with trying out crow pose, we'll lay on down and give ourselves a nice rest. Oh, great job. Give yourself a little pat on the back for exactly how you did today. We'll meet up laying down. Take a couple moments, just rest on the back body, breathe into the shoulders, to the arms, to the core. Even out those inhales and exhales, let go of the panting type nature of the breath and breathe deeply. You did an awesome, awesome job. All right, let's do a little work in bridge pose next, just opening up the back body. So inhale, step the feet in towards you, feet hips distance, heels in towards your bottom, and bring your hands down by your sides with the palms face down. Inhale, puff up the chest, inch the shoulders down the back body, exhale, lower the shoulders down. Inhale, bridge pose, so press through the feet, lift those hips up towards the ceiling, pause here, five big breaths. As you're here, imagine like you're squeezing a block between your thighs, lift those hips up, press the back of the head in towards the mat, lifting the chin up off the chest, one more big breath. 
Exhale, slowly lower those hips on down. All right, we're going right back into it. So on your next inhale, press through the heels, lift the hips up, pause. If you want to go a little bit deeper, you'll interlace the fingers under the low back, maybe inch those shoulder blades towards each other, really opening up the chest and the back body. Couple more big breaths, breathe deeply, chin lifts up off the chest as the chest presses towards the chin, squeeze the glutes. One more big breath here, you got it. On your exhale, if your hands are bound, feel free to lower the hips onto the arms or the wrists. If that does not check out in your body, then release your bind and totally come on out of it. Lowering the hips onto the wrists slash hands opens up the chest and the upper arms a bit more, but not everybody this works for perfectly. So find what works for you. It's okay if this one doesn't feel okay. Couple big breaths. Whenever you are ready to release the bind in the hands, just inch yourself on out of it. Step the feet wider than hips distance and allow the knees to rest against each other along the midline. Maybe you close the eyes, hands can rest on the belly, the body, or just down by your sides. Take some big old cleansing breaths, so deep breathing here. A couple more big breaths. One more breath. Beautiful. Whenever you feel like your low back has settled a bit and you're ready to move, just gently hug the knees in towards the chest, wrapping your arms around the legs, apanasana, knees to chest pose. Maybe you add a gentle sway or rock side to side. If you are, gently press the low back, the hips into the mat as you rock, providing a little bit more relief in that area. Continue to keep your mind on your breath and in your body, noticing what you feel every step of the way. Simply be here now. A couple more big breaths. Eventually slow down the rocks if you are rocking. And we'll make our way to a nice full body stretch. So reach the hands out overhead, feet reach out towards the front of your mat, full body stretch, stretch long. On your exhale, kind of step the feet over toward the left side corner of the mat. So left front corner of the mat, both the feet go that way. And then grasp your left hand around your right wrist and then kind of pivot, banana shape the body. Arms go toward the left corner of your mat where your hands are. So technically it's the back of your mat on the left hand sides where the hands are, front of the mat left hand sides where the feet are. If this feels like a nice enough stretch, you're going to stay right here. If you want to go one more step further in this kind of banana shape, then you'll lift the right foot up off the mat and then cross it over the left ankle. That'll exaggerate the stretch on the outer right leg just a tad. As you're here, continue to press the right hip down towards the mat. So you should get a nice long stretch on the outside of that right leg, on the side body as well. Relax the jaw, soften the shoulders, and just breathe into the shape for a couple moments. Be with what you feel. A couple more big breaths. Great job. On your next inhale, bring the hands back to center and kind of inch your shoulders back towards the midline of the mat, and then step the feet back to center as well. Exhale once you get there. Same stretch other side. So now walk those feet on over toward the right front corner of your mat. Then right hand grasps around left wrist and again kind of banana shape your body pulling the arms, the hands and wrists over toward the right back corner of your mat. So we're making kind of a curve with the body. Pause here. If this is enough, you're going to stay right here. If you want to move a little bit further, this time you're going to lift the left leg up off the ground and cross the left ankle over the right ankle. Again, just breathe deeply here. Should feel a nice stretch on the outside of that left leg, the left side body, and continue to press the left hip down towards the mat. That'll exaggerate the stretch a bit. Breathe, breathe, breathe. You're doing a great job. Take about two more full rounds of breath here. Notice what you feel and simply breathe into it. A 
Beautiful. On your next inhale, torso and shoulders come back to the center of the mat, and then step your feet back towards the center as well. Exhale. Inhale, full body stretch. Stretch your body long. Exhale, hug the knees in towards you. Wrap your arms around the legs. Maybe you rock side to side. Just check out. Notice how you feel after that stretch. And I'll leave the last posture to up to you. So if you want to go ahead and take a happy baby, butterfly legs, or any type of twist, or anything that feels good in your body before Shavasana, feel free to do so. Move to however it feels good for you, and then we'll meet up in Shavasana. So if there's anything else that you feel like you need before we end practice today, feel free to go there. And then only when you're ready, extend those limbs out, and we'll meet in Shavasana. But take your time. Give your body what it needs. And if and when you make your way to Shavasana, allow your body to rest down and gently draw your eyes closed. If you're still flowing and you need more time, please take all the time you need. Eventually, begin to invite in a soft, easy, a relaxed nature to your mind, to your body, to the space all around and within you. Begin to soften the body, relax it down, starting by relaxing the crown of the head. Soften the forehead, relax the eyebrows. Relax the eyes, imagine them sinking back towards the skull. Soften your temples and the cheekbones. Relax your jaw. Soften your lips, the teeth, and gently float the tongue down away from the roof of your mouth. Soften your ears, relax the back of your head and the scalp. Soften the back of your neck, the sides and the front. Open the throat. Melt your shoulders down the back body, sinking towards the ground beneath you. Relax the upper arms, the, or, <laughs> the upper arms and the elbows. Soften your lower arms and relax your beautiful wrists. Relax the backs of the hands, the palms. Allow the fingers to naturally curl inwards. Soften your chest, the heart space. Relax the rib cage, the belly. Melt the spine and the back body towards the ground beneath you. Soften the glutes, the hips, the pelvic region. As you relax the upper legs, the knees, Soften the lower legs and the ankles and gently relax the feet, allowing every toe to get a little bit lighter. Notice if you are holding on anywhere else in your body and gently let it go. Continue to keep letting go, letting go, letting go, even if you're not sure what you're letting go of.
Allow this inner state of peace, softness, ease to translate to your mind, opening it, relaxing it, letting it melt away like it's the muscle itself. For the next couple moments, let yourself continue to drift off into this beautiful state within and all around you. Keep letting go, letting go, letting go. Gently begin to invite the awareness back in towards your body. Maybe you deepen the breath, or you introduce small wiggles, the toes, the fingers, your wrists and ankles. Only when you feel ready to move your body, gently roll over to either side and pause to rest in a fetal position. Take all the time you need. And only when you feel ready, gently press yourself all the way up to seated, keeping the eyes softly closed as you move. Take your time. And we'll eventually meet up in a comfortable seat, eyes closed and palms touching at heart center. Take a couple of moments to consciously realize how you feel right now. Bring your awareness to your mind. Notice how it feels. What word describes the state of your mind right now? Gently bring your awareness to your body. Notice how it feels. What word describes the state of your body? Eventually, bring your awareness to your emotional well-being. What emotion do you feel in this moment? And just notice, observe, and let it be. We're just here to become aware. Gently give yourself a nice big old smile and really thank yourself. Express gratitude to yourself for showing up here today, for dedicating your time to your health, your practice, your well-being. 
Thank your body for all that it does for you and yourself for possibly even trying something new today. And thank you so very much for sharing your beautiful energy and practice with me here today. The light in me truly honors the light in you. Namaste.